All right, find your way to seat on your mat. Sit up nice and tall, and you can choose any position that helps you feel comfortable and grounded so that you feel the earth beneath you as a solid foundation, a support for your practice. And then a long, tall spine, so lift up tall through the heart and through the crown of the head, Whoop, lifting up to the sky. Let the shoulders melt away from the ears. We're going to begin with a little breath work. I think for most of you, it's near the end of the day, and uh, there's nothing that helps us to release a lot of the accumulated stress and heaviness from the day than breath work, pranayama, right? And one of my favorite pranayamas is bee breath or brahmari breath. And so let me demonstrate this to you. I'll do it, you watch, and then we'll do it together, okay? Bee breath is super simple. So you're just watching right now. We're not doing it, doing it yet. Index fingers, press on that little flap of cartilage to close the ear canal. And then you close your eyes, take a big breath in through the nose, and then you hum. Hmm. Just like that. And you keep on humming until all the breath is expelled. And you take another breath in through the nose and you repeat. We're going to do this three times. Now, you're not going to be able to hear me, uh, obviously. Your, your fingers are in your ears. Just do it three times at your own pace. And when you're done, let the hands fall to the knees, sit up tall, and relax. And I want you to really feel this vibration. So this vibration, the sound vibration that this breath creates is really powerful and it's healing. Let it move through your body. Feel it in the chest. Feel it in the sinus cavity. Feel it in the head, uh, in your ears, down your spine. Just let it go where it wants to go, right? May, sometimes in me, it excites this giggly kind of silly energy. Embrace the silliness. This is goofy, right? We're got our fingers in our ears and we're humming to ourselves but there's something beautiful about that too right so we're just kids playing right <laughs> so all right here we go index fingers press on the cartilage close your eyes take a big breath in mm -hmm. your hands float down to the knees, sit tall, and allow yourself to relax into whatever you feel. Breathing in through the nose, out through your nose. Let yourself relax into each exhale. From the crown of your head, across your forehead and your scalp, soften, relax. Relax your eyes and your cheeks. Relax your jaw and your tongue, from the tip of your tongue all the way down to the root. Feel as if each breath is dissolving any tightness or tension in your face, your jaw, neck, and shoulders. Let it all go.
sing together to begin our practice. This is a song of celebration. Celebrating what? Being alive. <laughs> celebrating your breath. Celebrating this practice. Celebrating all the little sweet moments that make life interesting. Great big adventure. The words are simple. It's Rama Bolo, Rama Bolo, 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 Ram. And Rama is an expression of unconditional love and joy. And Bolo means it's like, yeah, it's like a big, great, great big expression of celebration. It means to sing without any... To sing without any boundaries, to sing without any self consciousness or self judgment. Just let your voice ring. Rama Bolo, Rama Bolo. eyes closed. Welcome this energy that we create through our voice, through our collective voices. Let it move through you, in you, with you. As you inhale, blink your eyes, slowly open. All right, let's do a little energization tapping. It's a great way to wake up every cell in the body, get the energy moving internally. So make a little fist with your right hand and just begin to tap on your left collarbone, your chest, 
You can make a little uh, Tarzan noise, uh, if that feels good. <laughs> Down the collarbone, over the shoulder, the top of the shoulder to the tricep and the bicep. Get both sides, and then down the forearm. Again, turn the arm over, make your way up. And then let's work up the other arm, the forearm. Both sides, the bicep and the tricep. Coming up to the shoulder, the collarbone, and the chest. All right, now make cup both hands and begin to cup on the ribs. And then down the ribs to the belly, the outside outside of your hips, around the back, your low back, your butt, come around to the thighs, tap the knees, down the shins, to the tops of the feet, the soles of your feet, don't forget your toes, and come all the way back up the legs, back up the trunk, and now make two fists and just drum on the chest and hum. <laughs> <laughs> Great big breath, reach up to the sky, and then stick your tongue out for a lion's breath. <sighs> One more time, inhale, reach, big breath, lion's breath out, let it all go. <sighs> nice, extend your legs long on the mat. Let's come into a nice, easy forward fold to warm up and lengthen the hamstrings. So flex your feet, root the sit bones down. I always like to do a little wiggle to ground down and as you inhale reach up to the sky and as you exhale a slow mindful fold forward not herky-jerky not forcing just really take your time here my low back has been a little funky lately but if I'm really mindful and come into this slowly it's it's incredibly helpful now, as you start to feel the stretch up the back of the legs, internally rotate the legs. So turn the knees gently inward and feel your sit bones spread on the mat. And as you do that, press down through the backs of the hamstrings and the calves as you continue to fold. And just finding that sweet spot, right, where it feels like you're getting a good stretch, but you're not forcing the low back still feels nice and spacious. couple more breaths relax into it you can let the upper back round a little bit here as you come all the way down and then inhale rise up into a little counter stretch alter pose hands and feet come down bend into the knees press into the heels of the palms and the heels of your feet lift the, the hips and stay up here for a couple moments here, just shifting forward and back into the wrists, into the heels. Maybe make some circles. You can feel that stretch in the shoulders. As you inhale, press into the heels, lift the hips, big breath in, open mouth, exhale. Ha! Ah, slowly make your way, your sit bones down. Sweep your legs behind you. And let's find tabletop here. We'll move into a couple cat cows. So wrap the elbows in. Press into the index fingers and thumbs. Grip the mat. Push your heart forward. Draw the shoulders back. And as you exhale, rounded flex through the upper back. Draw the navel in. Press the pubic bone forward. Back and forth like this we go. Opening the upper back. Exhale, engaging the core, engaging the upper back. Move at a pace that serves you, that feels energizing and fun and interesting. and free. This practice should feel joyful in your body. Let yourself explore, experiment. The teacher offers guidelines, and then you just get to play with wherever your body takes you, right? No judgment. Coming back to stillness in tabletop. Let's work into the wrists a little bit here. So begin to rock from side to side, right to left, rotating the hands in opposite directions outward until the fingers come all the way back around and point towards you, okay? And then just a little bit, sink the hips back toward the heels and you feel that stretch up the wrists, up the forearms. Oh, yeah. You feeling a little something, something here? <laughs> if you type or text, 
or use, if you have fingers and hands, you need this. So it's really important. Let your head hang. If it feels good, you can sway from side to side a little bit. Adjusting the intensity by taking the hips back a little bit more or coming forward to decrease. As you inhale, come forward a little bit and begin to unwind the hands. And now curl your toes under and sit back to your heels. As you inhale, reach up to the sky. Great big breath. Wiggle the fingers. Cactus the arms. Lion's breath again. <sighs> again, reach up. Wiggle the fingers. Lion's breath out. <sighs> Let's come back to tabletop. Curl the toes. Lift the hips. Downward dog. Go ahead and pedal the feet. Bending one knee. Draw opposite heel down to earth. You know, things like lion's breath and bee's breath and even chanting, if it's outside of your comfort zone, these are so, so important because that's what yoga is all about, right? Self-study, self-exploration, and all of that good stuff just happens to lie outside your comfort zone. Sorry, folks. That's how it is. <laughs> that's how we grow, right? So... This, provides, this practice provides a safe space for us to explore, and you can feel it, right? When you really let yourself go, you feel something shift, something move, and it's beautiful. So allow that. Coming to stillness, great big breath in, open mouth, exhale. <sighs> Slowly walk your feet to your hands. Bend into the knees, take your feet hip distance apart and grab the opposite elbows and sway a little bit side to side here. And just breathe, relax, and let go. Let your upper body be soft and easy. Relax the muscles of your face. Horse flutter your lips. <laughs> Keeping the bend in the knees, release the hands to the mat and wave up the spine slowly to standing. As you inhale, reach your hands into the sky. Palms meet overhead and draw hands to the heart. Anjali Mudra, close your eyes. Let's just be here now for a moment. Standing rooted into the earth. Feel your heartbeat. Feel your breath. And feel all of the other sweet hearts that are practicing with us right now. Beating, breathing, moving. We're all connected. Big breath in. Open your eyes, reach up to the sky. Exhale, swan dive, empty the breath and release. Halfway lift, step back to a plank pose, a nice, long, strong plank. Wrap the elbows in, bringing a little bit more weight to the index fingers and thumbs. And then feel the crown of your head pulling forward as the heels pull back, lengthening through the spine. Now, extend the arms as if you're pushing through the mat into the earth and dome the upper back. Draw the navel in. Hollow the low belly and feel that strength and engagement of the back and the core working together. Slow as you can, lower all the way down to your belly and you can come to the knees at any point. Untuck the toes, slide the hands back, press into the heels of the palms, lift your heart and push your heart forward as you draw the shoulders back. Exhale, lower. Hips to heels, come back to child's pose and come forward into tabletop. Curl the toes, lift your hips, downward dog. Feet together and take your right heel up to the sky. Bend your knee and stack your hips wide open, but keep the chest square to the ground and keep equal pressure in both hands. So the twist is coming from the ribs and the core. Now, slow as you can, draw that right knee to the top of the right tricep, wrapping the elbows and touch the tricep. Sweep the knee across the front of the body and touch the left tricep. Inhale, take your right heel back up to the sky, three-legged dog. We're going to do that one more time. Exhale, right knee to the top of the right tricep. Touch. Sweep the knee across the front of the body to the left tricep. Touch. 
Inhale, take the heel up to the sky. And this time, you're going to step the right foot all the way to the outside of the right hand for lizard pose. Bring the back knee down is my recommendation. You can keep it up if you'd like, but I'm going to bring it down. And then take a moment here. Let your body settle and catch up to what's going on. And now you can choose. You can stay up here on the hands. You can come down to the elbows on a block or a pillow. Or if it feels good, you can bring those elbows all the way down to the mat. And we'll settle in here for a few breaths in lizard pose. This is such a good uh, stretch for both hips. So on the right side, we're getting the outside of the hip. We're getting into the hamstring and the IT band. Good stuff. And on the left side, you can feel it on the front of the hip, right? The hip flexor, the psoas. Really important. All right, inhale. Come back up to your hands. Lower the back knee if it's not already down. Turn over your right shoulder. Bend the left knee and grab the top of the left foot and pull it in towards your glutes. Now, this is a place where if you're reaching back and you can't find the foot, use a dish towel or a strap. Loop it around the foot, and you can pull it in. A couple of breaths here. Spiral the heart open to the sky. Now we're really getting deep into that left psoas in front of the left hip. Good stuff. As you exhale, release the back foot. Both hands come down inside the front foot. Lift the back knee and step the left foot to the outside of the left hand. And let's set up for bear pose. So sit nice and deep so that the thighs are parallel to the mat. Lift your head so that the spine is parallel to the mat. And then reach your hands forward. Right? You, you got me here? Relax and feel the weight grounding into the heels. Breathe. You're in, you're in a deep squat, so check the thighs. Are they parallel to the mat? Check the spine. Is it parallel to the mat? Breathe. Relax for three, two, one. Inhale. Stand tall. Reach up to the sky. Palms meet for a moment and then open them up. Spread your wings and dive. Halfway lift. Step back. Plank pose. Again, let's stay in plank for a moment, pressing into all 10 finger pads, wrap the elbows in, breathe. And now from here, dip your hips and heels to the right, bringing more weight to the right hand, rolling to the right side for a modified side plank. So the left foot stays on the mat here in front of the right. Look up to the left fingertips and then lift from the bottom hip all the way through those fingertips. Exhale, dip the bottom hip and reach back. Inhale, reach up and all the way over this time. Back to plank pose. Let's dip it to the other side. Again, the right foot stays on the ground in front of the left. Dip the hips and reach back. Inhale, reach all the way up to the sky and then all the way back to plank pose. Let's do that once again on each side. Reach up. Dip the hips and reach back. Inhale, sweep it up and over. Dipping to the left. Inhale, reach up through the bottom hip. Exhale, dip the hip and reach back. And inhale, sweep it all the way around. Back to plank pose. Slow as you can. Lower all the way down to your belly. Cobra pose. Untuck the toes. Press into the heels of the palms. Heart moves forward. Exhale, lower. Hips to heels. Child's pose. And come forward, tabletop. Curl your toes. Lift your hips, downward dog. Feet together, take your left heel up to the sky, bend the knee, stack the hips wide open here. Again, keeping the chest square to the mat, equal pressure in both hands. Slowly bring the left knee to the top of the left tricep. Touch the tricep, and then sweep the knee across the front of the body to the right tricep. Touch. Inhale, take the heel back up to the sky, three-legged dog. One more time, that same thing. Left knee, top of the left tricep, way up by the armpit. Touch. Sweep it over to the right arm armpit touch inhale three-legged dog left heel to the sky and this time step the left foot to the outside of the left hand for lizard pose on the left bring the back knee down again take a few moments here staying up on the hands find your breath relax and then you find a position for the hands and the arms that works for you I like a block here 
under my forearms and elbows. But like I say, you can take it all the way to the mat or you can stay up on the hands. Breathe into the places you feel sensation here. Outside of the left hip or maybe even the inside of the left hip as the knee splays open a little bit. Left hamstring and then that front of the right hip. Yeah, breathe into those places. This is good stuff. We need a practice, a daily practice that opens the hips because we sit. It's part of our culture. It's part of our work life. We need to counter that. Inhale. Remove the block, press up to the hands inside the front foot, lift the back knee, and then step that front foot to the outside of the right hand. Let's set up for another bear pose. Thighs parallel to the mat, spine parallel to the mat. Reach the hands forward. Settle in, breathe. And now let's do a little bear walk, right? Keeping this position, lift the left foot, step back. Lift the right foot, step back. And just waddle your way all the way to the back of the mat. Staying nice and deep, that's where the work happens, right? When you get to the back of the mat, pause, breathe, and let's waddle our way. I don't know if a bear walks like this, but I'm calling it a bear walk. <laughs> More like a giant fat duck walk, right? Hold, breathe, and as you inhale, rise up, reach into the sky, exhale, swan dive and empty, release. Halfway lift. And step back to plank pose. Your choice here, you can lower halfway or all the way, upward dog or cobra, and let's move through a vinyasa, making our way back to downward dog. Big breath in, open mouth, exhale. Ha. Feet together. Take your right heel up to the sky, nice and high. Knee to nose. Squeeze that knee into the chest, into the nose as you shift forward into plank. Keep hugging the knee, floating the knee off the ground, and then step forward, low lunge. Straighten your front leg for a pyramid pose. So step the back foot forward a little bit out to the left, spin the back heel down, straight front leg, and you fold the upper body over the straight front leg. Now this is a great place for blocks here. You want a nice long spine. So remember, blocks are never a crutch. They're a tool for exploration. And you never outgrow your blocks, right? I'm always using them, exploring, experimenting. As you inhale, halfway lift, and let's bend into that front knee, and we glide forward into warrior three. Wing the arms back, lift the left heel. Feel the heart and the crown of the head reaching forward. Staying balanced on the right foot, we rise up into one leg mountain pose. Hands to the sky, extend the left leg, point the toes, and hold the hips nice and even here. It's like a ballet move, right? Holding, breathing, and then float all the way back to a strong crescent lunge. So the left foot steps lightly back. Nice deep bend in the front thigh. Big breath, reach up. Exhale, spin the back, heel down, and open into warrior two. The ice cream truck is coming by my house. I hope you can hear it. <laughs> Holding warrior two, roll to the outside edge of the back foot, toe heel the front foot a little bit to the right, so the front heel and the back arch are aligned, then relax the shoulders, breathe, feel, straighten the front leg, reach as far as you can with the right fingertips and then hinge forward from the hips, triangle pose. Right hand can come to the shin or to the mat or to a block. Left hand to the sky, gaze to that lifted hand. Couple breaths here. And now engage the core, squeeze the inner thighs in a little bit. Take that top hand overhead, arm alongside the ear. Keep looking to the left fingertips. And now reach the bottom hand forward as well. Core supported triangle, reach, breathe, spiral the heart open. You got this. As you exhale, sweep the hands across the mat. Rainbow warrior. 
As you inhale, we sweep all the way back to warrior two, flip it, and reverse it. And on the next exhale, gliding forward into half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. So look down as you lift the left leg, gaze to the mat. Hand can come to a block here, the right hand or the mat. And then slowly take your gaze to that lifted hand. Or not, you know, if this is a challenging, <laughs> this is a challenging balance pose for you, as it clearly is for me, you can keep your gaze down, right? And then from here, if it feels good and you want to play, you can bend that left knee, grab the left ankle, open up into Chapasana pose. Breathe. Allow yourself to play, experiment, fall here. It's all good. Release the bind if you have it. We come back to half moon. Look down, and let's glide back to warrior two. Once again, we flip the front hand, reverse, lifting up through the heart. Windmill the hands down, frame the front foot, low lunge. The back heel spins up, and step back to plank pose. Make our way through a vinyasa halfway or all the way upward dog or cobra. Your choice. Exhale, lift the hips and push back downward. Dog, beautiful work. Big breath in. Open mouth, exhale. Ha. Feet together. Take your left heel up to the sky. As you exhale, draw the left knee into your nose and keep squeezing and hugging it into the chest as you shift forward. Hold, breathe, then step through between your hands. Straighten the front leg, pyramid on the left. Step the back foot forward, a little out to the right. Spin the back heel down and fold over your straight left leg. Once again, blocks, really nice here if you have them, or books or whatever. <laughs> you don't need support here, but it's helpful, right? Because it helps you get your spine long. And then you can fold with the full effectiveness of the pose happening. Relax into it. Again, send your breath to the places you feel sensation. Left hamstring. Inhale, halfway lift, bend into that front leg, and let's glide forward, warrior three. Lift the right heel, dip the right hip, Wing your arms back. Send the heart forward. Breathe. Now, staying balanced on the left foot, we rise up into one leg mountain pose. Hands to the sky. Extend the right leg. Point the toes and hold the hips level here. It's all about leveling the hips. This is hip flexor strength 101. As you exhale, float that right foot all the way back to a long, strong crescent lunge. Beautiful. Deep bend in the front knee, level it out. Big breath as you reach up to the sky. Exhale, spin the back heel down, open, warrior two. Extend through the fingertips and adjust your front foot as necessary, usually a little to the left here to align the front heel and the back arch. And now pull back on the outside of the left hip to integrate that left femur bone back into the hip socket. Open the front knee so you can barely see the big toe inside the knee. Relax the shoulders. Hold, breathe. Find balance. As you inhale, straighten the front leg, reaching as far as you can with the left fingertips. Hinge into triangle pose. Look up to the top hand, and that left hand again can come to the left shin or to the mat or to a block. Draw the navel in, engage the core, and take that top hand reaching to the front wall, arm over the ear, gaze to the right fingertips, and I'll reach the bottom hand up as well. Core supported triangle. So the palms are facing one another, and the core is doing all the work here. Feel that. Draw the navel in. Reach, breathe, spiral the heart open for two, one. Exhale, sweep the hands across the mat. Rainbow warrior. As you inhale, we sweep back to warrior two. Flip it and reverse it. And on your next exhale, let's glide forward into half moon 
on the left side. Left hand comes to the mat or to a block. Find your balance first. And then if it feels good, you can take your gaze slowly up to the lifted hand. Breathe. Engage that top leg. And now if you want to play, bend the right knee, grab the right ankle, and play with Japasana pose. Open the heart. If you're not in Japasana, but you still have that right leg extended, from skin to muscle to bone, engage the lifted leg. Draw the navel in to engage the core. All helps with stability. Release the bind if you have it. Look down, and we glide back to warrior two. Flip the front palm, take it up and back, reverse, and windmill the hands down, low lunge. One final vinyasa, step back to plank pose, and again, your choice, lower halfway or all the way, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, lift the hips, downward dog. Beautiful work, my friends. That was so good, so fun. Great big breath in. Open mouth, exhale. <sighs> Let's come to our knees, and we'll find child's pose together. Relax the forehead down to the mat. And just for a moment here, just feel all of your other friends in class in this same shape. Feeling the earth, feeling connected to the earth through the fingers, the toes, the forehead, the nose. And we bow to one another. You see the light and the love, the same light and love in me in you, in all of creation. And sit back to your heels and sweep your legs around in front. Okay, so we're going to work into a wide leg forward pose or a wide leg forward fold that eases us into our yin practice. Okay, so if you have props, pillows, blankets, this is a good time to place them out in front of you. Maybe you can boost that platform up a little bit. Find a nice place to rest your forehead or your chest. Root the sit bones. Again, a little wiggle here. Great big breath. Reach up. And as you exhale, fold and let your heart lead the way here. So reaching. And the hands come down. And wherever you find that initial place of resistance, stay, breathe, relax into it. And then from there, just let yourself ease down breath by breath. Maybe you come to your elbows and you stay. Maybe you continue on. Until you find a place of rest and ease. To remember our yin practice isn't about forci forcing ourselves into some shape that feels like suffering, right? It's not about that. It's about opening, surrendering, finding a place of ease and rest. Once you find your fullest expression, begin to bring an awareness to your breath. Feel the rise and fall of your breath. It's like an ocean wave. With each inhale, breathe in a sense of space and expansion. And with each exhale, release and relax a little bit more.
See if you can let yourself relax even more for the next few breaths. Finding a place of deeper stillness within. As you inhale, slowly rise. Take your time on the ascent. And now let's make our way all the way to our back. Place your props off to the side, but within arm's reach. And coming to your back, gently hug both knees into your chest. Close your eyes. Let's take a little rock side to side here. A nice release in the hips and the low back. Maybe exaggerate the rocking motion. And let yourself be fully immersed right here as if there's no next thing, right? This rocking is really, really therapeutic. It helps... Relax the nervous system on many different levels. And coming to stillness, hug the left knee in and let the right foot come down to the mat, but keep that right knee bent for right now. And we're going to work into half happy baby. So grab the outside of the left foot. Now, if that's a reach for you to grab the foot, you can use your strap, right? And loop it around the sole of the foot. And now grabbing the outside of the foot, gently open the, the hip a little bit and pull the, the knee down in the direction of the armpit. Now, you're not forcing here or yanking. You're just letting the extended arm and gravity pull the left knee in toward the armpit. And now if it feels good, you can extend that right leg and put the right hand on top of the right thigh and just relax into this. Close your eyes. Now if it feels like a lot of work holding the leg like this, See if you can relax. Relax the grip a little bit. Relax the left leg. Just let it be cradled. And let your left shoulder come down, press into the earth. Full deep breaths. And continue allowing yourself to relax with each exhale more and more. Notice if there's any tension in that left leg. Maybe the toes are <laughs> curled or the, the leg is tense. Relax those parts. Two more breaths. All right. Bend that right knee once again. Place the right foot on the ground and release the left foot to the ground. So both these are bent here. We're going to work into a little counter movement here, a glute bridge. So 
knees are bent, feet hip distant apart, and the knees are over the ankles, okay? Arms along your sides. And now just leave the hips where they are, a neutral position. No, no need to t tilt the hips up or down. And from here, push into the heels to lift the hips. So the pushing of the heels is engaging the glutes. You, you'll feel that. And continue to push into the heels until you find a nice flat plane all the way from the chest to the knees. Keep pressing at the top. Feel the glutes engaged. Close your eyes. Relax. You can relax in this pose. Breathe. Three, two, one. Exhale. Come down. Nice work. All right. Draw the right knee into the chest, and we'll do the other side. Half happy baby. Grab the outside of the right foot. And just let the body relax a little bit. Let the right hip open. And begin to pull gently down on the right foot so that the right knee is aiming or angled in toward the right armpit. And again, if it feels good here, you can extend that left leg long, left hand to the left thigh. Close your eyes and breathe. Now the practice is to find ways to ease up here. Notice all the places that you're tensing, gripping, and begin to relax while still holding the pose. Just breathe. Big, full, deep. your eyes and your cheeks. Relax your tongue and your jaw. Relax your neck and your shoulders. Relax into your hips and the low back. Feel your low back as if it's melting into the mat. And two more breaths here. Bend the left knee, bring that left foot down to the mat, and release the right foot down to the mat. Let's do another glute bridge here. So we set up by pushing into the heels, feet hip distant apart, arms along your sides. Okay, begin to push into the heels, and the pushing results in the hips lifting. You're doing nothing else but pushing into the heels, and you'll feel the upper body push forward, right? That's good. Once you get to the top, Keep pushing into the heels. Feel the engaging of the glutes and the hamstrings. Hold. And then as you hold, relax your face, your jaw, your shoulders. This should feel good. <laughs> Big breath in. Exhale, slowly come down. Ah. All right. One final set of poses here, a supine twist. So if you have a bolster or a pillow, I recommend that you have that handy and draw the right knee into the chest. Give the right thigh a nice little squeeze into the belly. And as you exhale, release the right foot down to the mat. Scoot your butt a little to the right and let the knee fall across the body to the left and place that knee on top of your pillow or support. You can place the left hand on top of the right thigh. 
And the left arm either, your choice here, extends out to the right, or you can bend that left foot and grab the top of the left, bend the left knee rather, grab the top of the left foot. One final little thing to get you set here. Lift the left shoulder, scoot your left shoulder a little bit to the left and let both shoulders come down squarely to the mat. Ah, nice, close your eyes and relax. back to that sequence where we relax the muscles of the face, your eyes, your brow, relax your cheeks, relax your jaw. anywhere where you're pulling or straining to get deeper I invite you just to let go Two more sweet breaths. Really let yourself melt. And as you exhale, return to your back. Extend the right leg long. Draw the left knee into the chest. Give that left thigh a nice little squeeze in the belly. And then release the left foot to the mat. Scoot your butt to the left. And let the knee fall across your body to the right. Again, options here. You can extend the left arm long, or you can bend that right knee, grab the top of the right foot, and draw it in. Allow yourself to relax. Just let go. Notice if your mind feels a little antsy or distracted, right? Maybe it's wandering off and solving problems or making problems. <laughs> Just notice that and then come back to your breath. Your breath is your anchor to the present moment where all of the healing and growth and awareness is, so keep coming back there. Again, relax your face, your eyes, your cheeks. Everything go.
for these last few breaths, I invite you to let go of all your worries and realize in this moment right now there are no problems. It's a celebration of being alive. You are alive and that is an incredible, beautiful gift. Just take these next few moments to savor that. you exhale release any binds that you may have and roll to your back for a sweet shavasana use your pillows your props all the good stuff to make yourself a little nest <laughs> and get comfy and while you do that i'm going to find my guitar so i can sing to you
to bring some movement to your fingers, your toes, your wrists, and your ankles. Moving slowly, really feeling each finger and toe waking up. And stretch your hands overhead and reach. Great big stretch. Wiggle your fingers and toes. Big breath. And as you exhale, draw knees into your chest. And roll to your right side. Stay there for a few moments. Again, really savoring each breath. Fully relaxed, fully present. Push yourself gently and slowly up to a seat, top of the mat. Bring palms together at your heart. And let's close our practice with the sacred sound of Om. And as we chant Om, I want you to feel and imagine and sense all of the other beautiful souls right here that are Oming with you. The power of Om is not bound by space and time. And so in this moment, we are all together in the same space of our hearts. And we send this Om out to each other and to all beings everywhere. May all beings be happy and free from suffering and the causes of suffering. And may our actions and our intentions and our words be a light in this world. May we lift others up as an inspiration. Big breath in. Um. Raise your thumb knuckles to the point between your brow, and we bow to one another. In light and in love. Namaste. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so very much. Get my glasses and my chair so I can say hi. <laughs> oh, Carol, so sweet. I'm, I'm just amazed that you stayed up that late from Sweden. That's amazing. But um, sweet dreams. I'm glad you are, were able to practice with us. Kristen, oh, good. I'm really glad that you enjoyed it, Kristen. I, I loved having you as part of this. So, Melissa Fuji, thanks. I'm grateful for you too, very much so. <laughs> Stacy, love you, Stacy. That's uh, so sweet. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks, Wendy. Rachel, thank you. Amanda, I miss you too. I miss you and Lainey big time. Katie, love you. Lots and lots. Thanks. I love you too, Lainey. Uh, great big hug all the way um, across the airwaves from, to Texas. Love you. Glad you're here. Susie, namaste, y'all. Peace. <laughs> Amanda, thanks. Really, really glad. Well, like I said, um, I want to keep these live streams going. And I love doing them. So if you could, in the next few videos, I'm going to ask some questions. If you could comment and let me know what day would work for you. I'm thinking Sunday morning so that it would be a morning time practice for um, the U.S. and an evening practice for Europe. And then, um, but, you know, let me know. And then um, a way to... Uh, I thinking of making it a donation-based class. Anyone can do it, 
uh, but I'm going to open it up to donations too and thinking about ways to do that. You can do Super Chat here. Uh, you can do Venmo, some other things like that, but just ways to, um, uh, to, to ask for support, okay? So thank you. Thanks a bunch. I really appreciate all of you. Kai, yes, I, I would love to. I just love these live classes together are really important, right? Especially in, in times like this where we feel so separate um, and we're kind of uh, isolated from one another. We need a community. We need to feel supported in that community. It's super important. And um, if I can hold space for that, oh my God, that would be the best thing. So I'm going to try to keep it going. You bet. And thank you. Ah, yes, right? Sunlight. This is a time where uh, it's right about now where the sun starts to, to set just over the trees there and I get a lot of sunlight coming in that front window and I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Joan wants ice cream. Oh my gosh. Now you planted the seed in my head and now I want ice cream. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, oh, cool. Well, thanks, everyone. Love you lots. I really appreciate every one of you. I'm very grateful. And um, like I say, this is the last stream of the 30 days, but it's not over. We're going to keep it going. We're going to find a way to, to make, um, make these streams happen at least once a week, maybe more. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Peace, love, light. Namaste. We'll see you soon. Thanks.